Welcome to another Senior Curriculum Inspiration, proudly supported by Texas Instruments Australia. My name is Peter Fox and I'll be your host and presenter for this session. Our Curriculum Inspiration series is designed to help teachers develop strategies in the efficient and effective use of Texas Instruments calculators through carefully selected mathematics activities available for free from the TI Australia website. Today we're looking at transformations of functions. The activity file contains lots of data collected using a motion sensor and also a voltage probe. While this data is very easy to collect, the purpose of the activity is to focus on transformations. So the data and corresponding primitive functions are set up already. Students use transformations of the primitive function to model the data. The first set of data is the motion of a bouncing ball. Students are required to use F2 of X to apply transformations to the function already defined in F1 of X as X squared. The first question explores transformations that create a reflection in the x-axis. While we can see that this doesn't exactly model our bouncing ball, it's a starting point. The next transformation students are encouraged to apply is one that is parallel to the y-axis. So I'll take a guess by including a plus one. The next step is to apply a translation parallel to the x-axis. Students may decide that this is not necessary and proceed to the next question, which then prompts them for a dilation. Students can check how closely their function models the data by using the zoom box option. Once students are happy with how well their function and transformations model the first ball bounce, they proceed to the second and subsequent ball bounces. The subsequent ball bounces provide the repetition required to help students remember the effect that each parameter has on the primitive function. There are several advantages to using this approach. The graphs produced by the calculator provide instant feedback. Students are generally happy to practice multiple transformations, not because the textbook requires it, rather to get a better model for their data. Once the students have got all the equations to model the ball bounce, they move on to the next task, stored in problem 2. In problem 2 there's data for the motion of a pendulum again collected using the CBR. Now we see that the function this time, or the data at least, seems to be periodic, best modelled by a trig function. Now even if the students haven't started doing trigonometric functions, the purpose of the activity is to focus on transformations. So we'll start by doing much the same as what we did in question 1. We'll start with a dilation this time. Let's try 0.2 times f1 of x. We see we get a dilation parallel to the y-axis. Again, we'll apply a vertical translation. We can see that we now need to apply a dilation parallel to the x-axis. You'll notice we didn't do anything about the period of the function in regards to calculations. The students are simply estimating. We now need to apply a horizontal translation. We've got a number of options here. We could go left or right. We can see our model or our function is getting closer. We'll need to adjust the amplitude a little more.
Once the students are happy enough with their model, they move on to problem 3. In problem 3, we're looking at data collected from the discharge of a capacitor. This happens in a sort of an exponential form, so we can see a basic e to the x function. This time we'll do a reflection in the y-axis. So we'll enter our function again, a transformation of f1, and we'll enter as f1 of negative x. We'll need to apply some dilations. I'm going to try 9.5 times f1 of x, and then maybe edit the other one by a little, let's say, 0.1. As you can see, I've done this one before. The last data set in this activity is actually an image, an image of the Olympic rings. In this case, students need to use a relation. So the first task is to change their graph type from function to relation. The other difference in this activity is students type the equation directly. We can see the basic form of x squared plus y squared equals r squared for our circle for the first ring. I'm going to guess a radius of 2.6. You can see that the estimate's not too bad. We can also change the colour to make it easier to see the actual Olympic ring. I need to put a small translation in. I'm going to say about 0.1 off to the left. and maybe a slight increase in the radius and I'm happy with the result. The next thing is to move on to the next ring. Let's start with the red ring. We can see it's going to have the same radius we just need to translate it off to the right. Just as a rough guess I'm going to start with translation of 7.5 off to the right. So we've got x minus 7.5 squared plus y squared equals our radius squared. And I've gone a little bit too far, but once again that doesn't matter. The whole idea of this is that the calculator is giving the students instant feedback. They can see what they need to change. And now with a red circle on a red ring, I'm pretty happy that my red Olympic ring is correct. That's all for this Curriculum Inspiration. Be sure to join us for the next one and make sure you download the activity. Thanks for watching.